The gentleman on uh, the other side, sir. The, the, the chap here. Yeah. Yeah. Good evening. In my opinion, you've made some uh, valid criticisms on the influence of God and religion upon our society. Thank you. However, do you acknowledge that some notion of spirituality is pertinent to maintain a humility and perspective of our own existence, which does not necessarily depend on a notion of a God or a deity? Um, I had the experience last night, last evening, of um, going into here Evensong at the cathedral in Hereford. And just as the bells finished tolling, got there just in time for the start of the prebendal singers, and ran into Anthony Grayling on the way out, who, before I could say to him, what are you doing here, said, <laughs> Christopher, bitch, what the hell? And I said, no, I, I wouldn't miss it. And I'm glad I was there, by the way, because if it wasn't for me and a couple of old ladies in motorized chariots, the choir, the provincial choir, would be singing to an empty uh, nave, which I think would have been a shame. And George Herbert, who I think is probably the greatest, along with John Donne, the greatest English religious writer and poet, was at Hereford. And Lawrence Treherne was at a parish, that she had the living of a parish just down the road. And you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to and couldn't possibly be without that tradition. You'd lose a lot of your sense of moral proportion, I think. So the great cultural question to me is not how to reject religion, um, because that's easy enough to do, uh, but how to transcend it, how to, how to make something out of the extraordinary architecture, poetry, music, and painting that it's produced. I give the example, because it's not an English or a Christian one, or a monotheistic one at all, of the Parthenon, about which I wrote a book. Um, if the Parthenon was to be destroyed, um, I, I don't know how one would go on contemplating things. It would be a loss greater than perhaps that of a friend almost or a relative. Uh, and its, its existence and indeed its um, restoration means a great deal to me and I've written a lot about it. But I have no interest at all in the cult of Pallas Athena or the worship of her or in the Eleusinian mysteries and that cult or in fact in Athenian imperialism and the Melian expedition about which Sir Peter knows a lot more than I do. But, so the cultural question is how does one preserve, appreciate, enhance the symmetry and beauty of the Parthenon while discarding um, superstition and the supernatural? And I, I believe that's a cultural task that everyone has something to contribute to. Thank you. I mean to say, sorry, to whichever one has something to contribute. Sorry. 